Hello. So what we want to do today is an exercise where we determine our cable links automatically. So we'll have some cables in a schematic and we want to do some sort of system layout where we can get these cable links automatically from this layout. Okay, and this will be an exercise in field sys topology. Okay, so first let's go ahead and create a new page. This will be the page type of topology. And I'm going to apply some structure identifiers. I'm going to apply a document type of map. Give it a page name one. I'll just call it topology. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll give it a page scale of one to 20 because we want to draw our topology routing paths in a one to one scale. Okay. So now we have this page created. Next thing we need to do is check our symbol libraries. If we go to the management symbol libraries of our project, we can add the topology library here. You have a few different ones that are included by default. Um, since we're in a 1 to 20 scale, we'll use this M20. If we were in a 1 to 50, we would use the M50. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that one. Okay, and now let's look at what we're trying to route together. So we have the cable is in between the terminal strip. It connects the terminal strip and our motors. So that's what we're trying to um, determine. So on the topology page, let's first place our terminals. What we need to do is place a terminal strip definition. So I'll generate this from the terminal strip navigator. Okay, there's our terminal strip definition and I'm gonna go ahead and place this one here. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to hit escape. Let's go edit one more thing in the page properties. Um, here we'll change the grid to, let's say, a 40 millimeter grid. Okay, since the page scale is quite large, it's going to make it easier to keep things clean with the larger grid. Okay, so we'll place our terminal strip definition. Use tab to rotate it where it's facing the right. Okay, you can see this, uh, the text and everything scales really nicely because of that, um, that uh, symbol library we use, the M20. So it's automatically uh, meant for that sort of scale. Okay. Now using my device navigator, we'll place these motors. Place that one. Place that one. Okay, and now we want to route in between. Um, so we can determine our length of our topology routing point and our routing uh, paths. So under insert, you have this topology section. First, we'll place our routing points. Think of these like an entry point into a cable tray, more or less. Okay, place one of those. Uh, this is included in the special library. Uh, it's not a part of the topology library, technically. Okay, so we'll place that one. You can give it a special device tag if you want. We'll call it RP1 for routing point. Draw your, uh, your topology routing paths. Okay, this is why it's good to use that larger grid. It makes it easier to connect everything. Okay, and then I wanna basically make, let's say we wanna make it 10 10 feet, so I'll type, we're going to the left, so I'll type negative 10 feet. And then we have to also define the Y direction, so negative zero feet is fine. Oh, hit enter. Oops, let's do that again. Insert, topology, routing path, negative 10 feet, zero. Okay, I'll hit space and I'll just go ahead and rotate that. It's probably the easiest way. Okay, rotate that 90 degrees. Now we can move this a little bit closer. And since uh, this is just one device connected, we don't really need to um, use a routing point on this one. We could just connect it right there. Okay, and now we can uh, route next. Um, you could also manually define uh, the routing length at the um, at the routing path. So auto the automatic length is the real length that we drew. 
we could change it here if we wanted. So I'll highlight everything there and then we'll go to connections, topology route, and everything changes colors, basically telling us that it was indeed routed. Okay, and now if we go back to our schematic, we can see uh, we have these links here, 10.7748 feet. Okay, it's about 10 and 3 quarters uh, of a foot. Okay, next let's do it a different way. So let's say we want to route not every individual device, but the structures. Um, we want to route those two locations together. So let's go ahead and delete everything and do this in a different way. We'll place a structure box. This will be for the control panel one. That's the uh, location that, the, the, that those pages are on there. I'm going to change the display just so we can actually read the text. OK, we'll copy and paste that. We'll make this one for the field. That's where the motors are located. And next, we'll place a routing point in each one of those. So we'll go insert topology routing point. And I'll go ahead and place it. When I do this, I'm going to change the function definition of this uh, this uh, routing routing point. Instead of just a topology routing point, we'll change it to a topology structure routing point. Now we can copy that over here. Double click. Okay, topology structure routing point. It has a uh, the device tag of of one because it's in a different location, so that's fine. Doesn't need to be uh, unique because the location's unique. Okay. So now we need to apply the functions into these uh, routing points. For this, you have some filters in this connected structures. If you wanted to filter out or filter in certain um, certain types of devices, you could do that. For this purpose, we'll allow everything to be included. So we can highlight those um, those routing points as long as they're highlighted. This will be fine. And we'll go to connections and generate functions automatically. Okay, we've generated three new functions. So what it does is it looks every looks for every device that's a part of the structure in this case field and adds it into that. And we can see this by manually doing that. So if you go back to generate functions manually, you can see which ones were added. Okay, so you can also manually select which ones you want. So those two motors are added into that one. If we go to this one just to verify, the terminal strip is added there. Okay, now let's draw a routing point, or a routing path, excuse me. Draw it from there, and then I'll do 10 feet. Okay. Hit space to confirm. Now we can move this one where it connects. Um, we can also just do it like this, right? Get it close enough and then we can go and add, uh, change this where it's 10 feet. Okay, now let's route. Okay, let's go back and look at our um, cable our cables here, you can see that now it's showing 10 feet. If I go back here, change this again, let's make it 20 feet. Uh, we need to reroute, let's do that. Go back here, now you can see 20 feet. Okay, so those are the two primary ways of uh, managing your topology. Um, you can, of course, map each individual device or you can map the entire structures. In my opinion, I prefer the method of the structures because usually um, your cable trays are going to go in between some sort of enclosures or um, field area. Obviously, in the field, the motors could be quite spread out, so maybe um, you, want, you want to do individual devices, but um, I just wanted to show both of those methods. Okay.